The draft is right around the corner, and I think it's time to talk about who I believe is the best throw and throw punter in the draft and where I think he's going to end up. So I'll hold no surprises and pull no punches when I say, despite the stats, despite combine performances, despite the senior bowls, I think Brad Robbins is the best punter in this class. First, let's talk about some tangibles, starting with point A, Brad's season average. He had 42.3 yards per punt this season. This would be the lowest average he's had since his rookie campaign. However, there are some other stats to go with it that I think contextualize this and show why I'm not particularly worried about it. First, he kicked across the 50 yard line a bit with 16 of 43 of his punts staying inside the 20 without allowing a single touchback. And his middle of the pack average is coupled with the single best hang time average in the league as as well as the highest fair catch percentage. There are also a few times he could have really gotten into a punt, but it was interrupted by an off-target snap that he had to manage. And there's also one outlier game that is heavily bringing down his average, which was this windy game against Illinois, where Brad punted into a notably heavy headwind for three of his four punts. That statistical anomaly accounts for a full 1.5 yards per punt being lost this season, at the very least assuming he didn't have a phenomenal game, in which case it accounts for more. I'll also throw in the fact that I've held one of their footballs before, and they have mudded Vapor Elite Thins. Now, these are not very conducive to punting, as it's harder to turn over such a narrow ball like the Vapor Elite Thin, and the mudding process also makes the ball heavier, meaning that his transition into NFL ball should be an easier one, and we've been able to see that as he put up consistently better numbers at his combine and at the senior bowl that he attended. Now, on the more critical side, I will say this. I think Brad played entirely too safe this season, and he plays like he has the least to prove, which may not have been his best play if he was trying to stand out he hit just a lot of really good punts his tape looks solid but connoisseurs of the special team such as myself can see how well he's punting however those without such acquired taste may not be able to see the same thing and i would have liked for more games like yukon where he just opened up on the ball a bit more and let those things fly instead of just pulling his punches now he does however have a history of success that's holding his numbers up as well. <clears throat> the past two seasons, he's been a top 10 punter in terms of average and net average. He's also been hitting some massive balls dating all the way back to high school. So despite what numbers may say this year, there's not really any question of if he can hit the big ball. We also can see from his combine performance that he was the only other punter to hit multiple punts over five seconds of hang. He was second best in the directional set with distance and hang time, and second best hang time with the pooch punt set, but easily the best placement on that set with them being down at the five, the 10, and the three yard line. But when we think about his live game performances, there's also another factor that jumps out, which comes to point B. I think of this draft class, he is easily the best when it comes to directionality on a consistent basis. Now, his film is marred with some snaps that are a little bit off base, and he has to be forced to do some rollouts, but even some of those rollouts had some exceptionally good punting direction to them. But when I scoured through his tape, he hit such a clean directional right ball. I mean, against Maryland, he was completely shutting down their returner, pinning them to the right sideline and inside their own 10. He hit a great pin against Hawaii, which was a beautiful directional left. At Rutgers, he showed off a great ability to punt in both directions, resulting in the returners being forced to watch balls land or try to field them outside of either hash. And this is a very important aspect to his game. And his film is just filled with strong directional play game in and game out to be critical again his lefts do sometimes fade a little bit more middle than i'm sure he wants them to and he does have a miss hit that fades a little bit further left so it looks like at times he plays the left ball a little bit too shallow which can leave the ball closer to the middle of the field and on his rights he plays a lot more aggressively but that miss hit left will often take him to pretty good direction on his right but even though he does this very well i think there is one more thing that makes him really stand out in this class which is point C, the most impressive part of Brad's resume, a part that's heavily glossed over in this whole debate, is his fair catch percentage. 
Now, for those at home wondering, he has a 48% fair catch percentage, which I can guarantee you was his main goal this season, hence we saw some lower distances than seasons past. And I'm going to be very honest when I say it should be way higher. I mean, I'm not just saying I think it should be higher. Look at this punt against Colorado. That was completely not a deserved return. That should have been fair caught. The returner was just frustrated. Same thing against UConn. This one should have been fair caught. I mean, it landed a foot in front of the return Turner, but he just didn't want anything to do with it thanks to the hang time. Against TCU, he had two that the returner just judged improperly or didn't like the looks of, so he just let them go. And against Purdue, this guy was most definitely should have fair caught it, but just got tackled for no gain instead. That is easy. Five extra fair catches that should have been on his resume, which would boost him to an absolutely insane 60% fair catch percentage, which to the best of my knowledge has never been done before at the collegiate level. Heck, even his 48% isn't closely matched by any of his peers, so a 60% would have made him a historical standout at this category. The closest in this draft class to him in this aspect is Adam Korzak, who is also has an astounding 41% fair catch percentage. But many of Korzak's punts come from a rollout style, which is designed to artificially boost time to cover, thanks to how long Korzak will hold onto the ball before he kicks it. Not a knock on Korzak, of course, just noting the stylistic difference between these two punters. For his intangibles, here's what makes me think he's easily going to transition at the professional level. Form-wise, he takes really short and narrow steps and his swing is super smooth and right through the ball, which is how he gets such good trajectory on his punt. He had to do some rollout punting, but his resume doesn't lean on that fact at all, aka his best punts are definitely not from the rollout style. On top of this, his grit is right up there with anyone from his class. I mean, in his sophomore season, he suffered a major injury, forcing him out of commission, and he was able to overcome that and come back better than ever in his last three years. On top of this, no one has had to play in bigger games than Brad Robbins has. The pressure riding on some of his punts has been incredibly high in his career, with Michigan being a standout team. So that's something you just can't overlook when it comes to playing at the next level. So now I'm sure you'll be wondering where he's going to end up. There are four very punter hungry teams as far as I can tell. The Rams are definitely going to draft somebody. The Patriots are likely going to draft somebody. Bengals and Cardinals, it would not be unsurprising. And the Jets have just signed Thomas Morstead. I think the Patriots and Bengals have a history of drafting punters and the Bengals especially like their hometown heroes with both Drew Chrisman and Kevin Huber, their last two punters, being born in Ohio, and with Brad Robbins being born just outside Columbus, it seems like a top choice for him is going to be the Cincinnati Bengals, which means that he'll also likely be targeted by the Patriots for understanding his value. That being said, I just don't see him going in the 117th pick in the fourth round to the Patriots, so I'd imagine they're going to go for him in the 131st to the Bengals or the 135th to the Patriots again if the Bengals end up not going for him. But that's just my two cents. As always, I hope you guys are having an amazing day. Brad, if you're watching this, keep balling out and peace.